Good afternoon all. Today I want to share with you my thoughts about this device which I've been kind of looking at for the last week or so. It's the Power Oak EB150 uh, 1500 watt hour portable power generator. So at the moment I've got it hooked up to this big 240 watt solar panel and if I'm careful not to block the light and I switch on the display and if we can actually get an image of the display it's currently it's late afternoon and it's taking in 175 watts so what is this device well it's a big box full of lithium-ion batteries I mean actually it's a little bit smaller than I thought it was going to be from the images I'd seen but a fair bit heavier it's 17.2 kilos and uh, my general impression is that this thing is designed to replace a petrol generator a small size petrol generator um, where a petrol generator is not suitable so for example where you need quiet power or where you need power delivered without the uh, exhaust fumes so this is the UK variant you can see that there are two UK style uh, AC sockets on the back 240 volts and you can pull up to a thousand watts from the built-in pure sine wave inverter and above the AC sockets you can see there's a fan you might be able to hear that as well now that comes on at various different power levels uh, if the inverters supply more than 400 watts that comes on if the input is supplying more than 100 watts which it is at the moment from this solar panel that fan comes on and then various uh, different levels for the DC outputs and uh, talking of the DC outlets we have four USBs each pair can deliver up to 3 amps there's a USB type C power delivery socket which can deliver 45 watts max there's a 12 volt 9 amp cigarette lighter 12 volt and it's regulated 12 volts the cells inside here are actually 14 point something volts it's uh, described as a 4s 3p battery pack and here there's a single input socket which says DC 16 to 60 volts uh, at up to 10 amps uh, the plug that goes in there is a 7909 7.9 millimeters outside diameter and the pin is uh, 0.9 millimeters but there's also an internal surface in there which I think most of the current actually flows through I'll plug that back in so that we're charging the unit back up and we'll take a look at the display now this display it's uh, quite pretty it's black and blue and illuminated white but it's really difficult to film it's quite difficult to see outdoors in any case but getting Getting it on camera is even harder, but there it is. You can see that uh, we've got 140 watts or so going in. And there's a battery indicator, and it's showing that it's about four fifths full currently. And this display is completely impossible to see when the backlight turns off, so you do have to keep turning the backlight on in order to see what's on it. Now with an input uh, source, this is solar panel of course, you can see that the input watt meter comes on. If I press and hold the on button, you can see that all of the watt meters come on. So now I could switch on uh, either the DC outputs or the AC outputs and then we could use it in a sort of UPS mode where we've got incoming power and outgoing either DC or AC power. So let's give that a try. Here's a 60 watt uh, light bulb connected to one of the AC outlets. So turn on the backlight. The uh, all electronics is on. Now let's turn the AC on. Okay, that's on. Now it will take a little while for the AC inverter to power up. Quite a while actually, but there it goes. And now you can see that we've got 170 watts coming into the unit and 85 watts I think that's reading a bit high 
because that is a 60 watt bulb going out of the unit. And it does say in the manual that um, if the output power is less than 30 watts it may not register at all and if you're drawing a high power the error on the power meter could be different by up to 30 watts. Well it looks like it might be different in any case. Now there does seem to be quite an emphasis on charging this unit uh, with solar power because the supplied mains adapter which plugs into the same socket charges the unit at 160 watts but you can charge the unit with solar at up to 500 watts that's if you've got a sufficient number of solar panels I don't have 500 watts of solar panels which I can string in a series parallel array that would give me 500 watts of charging power now let's just go back to the AC outlets on this device. You can draw up to a thousand watts, but there's actually an overload potential where you can go up to 1200 watts for two minutes, according to the manual. And in excess of 1200 watts, uh, just for one second before the protection will kick in and the unit will switch the inverter off. Now I have discharged this unit at a kilowatt or slightly less, it was 950 watts. And it can do it, and it can do it continuously, but you don't get the full 1500 watt hours. In fact I got um, just under one kilowatt hour. So then I repeated the discharge test at 440 watts it was, an oil filled radiator. And uh, that also ran continuously at that wattage and I got uh, 1200 watt hours out of the unit, 1.2 kilowatt hours. So let's take a little look at those discharge test results. Uh, the first one at one kilowatt and then the 440 watt discharge test. So now for the EB150 sustained one kilowatt test. Let's see if it can uh, hold one kilowatt into that fan heater for the entire duration of the discharge. So first make sure the battery is fully charged and it's not drawing any power from the 240 watt solar panel. So the battery is fully charged. Let's switch the unit on. Switch on the AC. It does take a little while to get started, but there it goes fan heater is on. So let's do a power measurement comparison. So the display says 985 watts and the energy says 960 watts. The only indication that this is under fair amount of strain is that the bars on the battery have dropped to three bars. Now that's just the voltage of the battery dipping down because it's under a kilowatt of load or nearly a kilowatt. So while it's dissipating one kilowatt, is it getting warm? Nothing on the top, nothing around the back. It's a little bit warm there, just above the logo. And at half a kilowatt hour, let's check the temperature of this unit. Well, it's warm, I would say, uh, there, but not really anywhere else. So this is where the heat is being generated. Eight hundred and sixty watt hours and I've noticed that the power generator is down to one bar on the battery indicator. And that's it. It's shut off. Uh, this meter has a battery so it should tell me the final reading which is 0.975 kilowatt hours or 975 watt hours. Uh, on the power unit there's actually still one bar but we've got the error code E008. Well that's interesting because error E008 is under voltage protection for the first cell. So has the pack gone slightly out of balance, I wonder? Now I'm going to test the EB150 portable power generator. 
at about half load so this oil filled radiator should run at about 450 watts and we'll do a full discharge now it is fully charged at the moment as indicated by the display all bars on the battery and it's taking nothing from the big solar panel there so it is fully topped up let's switch on the ac and start the test so switch on the unit press and hold switch on the ac output press and hold that takes a little while for that to start going and then the uh, power meter should light up okay so we've got on the cost bar kilowatt hours and on the energy bar we've got watts that's 443 that the oil filled radiator is drawing and we start counting the kilowatt hours and uh, as we got with the one kilowatt test the power meters don't quite agree the power generator is saying 453 watts but this meter is saying about 440 so there's a little bit of disparity there now we've lost one bar on the battery symbol um, but i suspect that's just voltage droop because of the load being pulled out of the battery pack uh, you've got to remember at a kilowatt it's going to be pulling something like 70 amps out of the battery so at half a kilowatt possibly 35 amps it's going to pull the battery voltage down so we're going to get an artificially low indication uh, for remaining capacity so in an attempt to minimize the off time of the oil filled radiator i've now pointed this battery operated fan at it to try and blow the heat away from it so 250 watt hours that's quarter of a kilowatt hour and the battery powered fan does seem to be very effective at keeping that oil filled radiator from switching itself off on its own thermostat so that's now presenting a continuous load of 440 watts this unit says it's 453 watts it's slightly over reading uh, but the battery is staying firm at four bars so 975 watt hours was what the eb150 yielded when it was loaded down with a one kilowatt load actually slightly less it was 950 watts now this is a 440 watt load it's actually dropped very slightly and the battery indicator is down to two bars this is showing that we're drawing 450 watts now of course you'd expect um, with this running at half a kilowatt or a bit less that the uh, energy inside the power generator is going to last longer uh, certainly expecting to get a kilowatt hour but how much more than that can we get very unlikely we'll get uh, 1500 watt hours because that is the native capacity of the uh, lithium cells there are losses of course when you invert up to 240 volt mains and now at just over one kilowatt hour the unit has dropped to one bar so i need to sit and watch it now to see when it terminates and also to see what error message it gives when it stops well now we've got 1.2 kilowatt hours it's still running and the display shows no battery bars at all and yes it's uh, stopped and the error is error 8 so once again cell 1 has gone below its minimum voltage but this time we're not showing one bar we're showing no bars uh, that of course has gone off because it's no longer let's turn off my fan it's no longer uh, driving this unit but I can see the final result and it's 1.2 1.2 kilowatt hours 1200 
watt hours. So I've set up the EB150 with this uh, folding solar panel. Let's see what is on the display. And that's generating about 100 watts. So now I'm using these three solar panels in series. Now the open circuit voltage will be in excess of 60 volts, but the maximum power voltage will be within range. So let's check what's on the display. And that's yielding 195 watts. So this shows that the unit is entirely happy with three 36 cell panels in series. Oh, that's over a hundred cells, isn't it? Now I test with the two left-hand panels in series. They're both 80 watts, so that's notionally 160 watts. And that's 125 watts. And now the right-hand two panels, so that's 80 watts on the left and 100 watts, supposedly on the right. And that's yielding, yeah, slightly more. That's 130 watts. Now, what if it's all current and not so much voltage? So the right-hand panel on its own. And that's 72 watts. Now the right-hand panel paralleled with the center panel and that's 115 watts and now all three panels in this horrible parallel arrangement let's see what that's yielding and it's 153 watts so I think with these three all in parallel, we've come up across the 10 amp maximum input current limit. Okay, let's try this panel. This is 240 watts, but 60 cells, so it will have a higher voltage. I think the maximum power voltage of this panel was around 28 volts. Let's see what we're getting in terms of watts. And that's yielding 183 watts. And uh, now the aluminium backed flexible solar panel, notionally 100 watts. And that's giving 81, so around 80 watts. So in summary, I think this portable power generator has some industrial applications, particularly where one doesn't want noise or smoke. Um, it also has leisure uses because of the very versatile solar input, MPPT. You can maximize the power from a relatively small solar panel. The one kilowatt inverter with a little bit of overload margin, I think also makes it suitable for light industrial and leisure applications. And I thought I'd just check out Power Oak's website um, for their solar panel offerings. And the biggest one they've got is this one, the 120 watt, 18 volt. Now, of course, you could connect uh, four of those to the EB150. Yes, that'd be quite interesting to check out. Cheerio.